Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 63 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm uh, hanging out with my wand of equal trade here, because uh, I'm having a little fun playing around with my little walkway things that I was making. Remember I was trying to maintain this whole, like, you know, uh, walkway pathway thing that'll lead between all my buildings. Well, I haven't really been keeping up with them as well as I should have been, probably. So, you know, making sure that happens as best as I can. Uh, so right now, just Wand of Equal trading up some of the dirt, and poof. Nice. Love the Wand of Equal Trade. Uh, but yeah, working on getting my whole nuclear reactor set up going. So remember, last episode we wrapped up, and uh, what we had was uh, one of two things going on. We had a couple things going on. Number one, uh, we saw this connector here running across that basically was disabling our nuclear reactor when we didn't want it to run uh, when this thing filled up, which is good, but at the same time I'm using my nuclear reactor now to create UU matter. So if I want that to happen, we're going to have to either have an override switch or get, you know, get rid of that whole thing altogether. Not sure what direction I want to go there with that yet. Secondly, I need a way to get the scrap that's being produced from all my recyclers out of the recyclers and into the mass fabricator. Uh, we need that thing to constantly churn on scrap. So number one, we have to test once we've got it set up, if uh, you know the scrap being produced by the three recyclers is enough, or do we need, I don't know, maybe six recyclers? We're gonna have to find out. Um, and then once we've got all that going, we're gonna uh, go ahead and do what we can to make sure that that scrap makes it straight into here. Now we could, if we wanted to, get some of uh, the fabricators and uh, convert that scrap into scrap boxes because scrap Scrap boxes in a mass fabricator do a pretty darn good job of uh, working. They're about nine times as effective, which makes sense because you make scrap boxes with nine scrap. But, you know, it's not, in my opinion, necessarily worth it. So we don't really have to do that, but we might. We'll see. So uh, I was telling you guys at the end of last episode, if we want to use routers here to, uh, you know, manage this whole system, then what we're going to need to do is uh, come up with something a little bit creative to make this thing work. So uh, we're going to have to use machine filters, but unfortunately, uh, machine filters, yeah, those guys require the logic matrix identifier, and for that we're going to need a little bit of the infrastructure from the factorization mod. So, uh, today's episode, I'm going to be introducing you guys to factorization, uh, some of the stuff that I haven't shown you just yet. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from the UU Matter nuclear reactor build, and we're going to work on factorization. We're going to see what's involved, how it all works, and all the cool stuff that factorization gives us. If you set up your factorization setup correctly, you can actually wind up tripling your ores instead of just doubling it like most mods allow you to do. However, it is a long and time-consuming process that requires a lot of effort, so make sure that, uh, you know, you want to do that. It's just an option, though, but we might not necessarily even see all that today. What we're going to see today is going to be uh, a bunch of interesting stuff, basically along the lines of how to make the things you need in order to get uh, what I want to get, which is this guy, the logic matrix identifier. Cool? So uh, we'll be working on that a little bit, but for now, I uh, am going to continue cleaning up this little pathway, and I'll be back in a few. Alright guys, I would like to welcome you to my brand new factorization room. Oh yeah, looking good. Using a little bit of glass viewers from Zycraft just to make some skylights, and boom, look at that. Nice room here we've got. Made it out of marble, you know, figured just a little something different. I liked it. Uh, in the back, though, I want to build a nifty little area back here for our power generation. So I'm going to give you guys the full tour on factorization, the power generation, and a few of the cool machines that you can get with it. So I uh, made a nice little room for it. Now I'm thinking I want some kind of fences back there. What kind of fencing do I want? Hmm, let's see... Maybe I could put some nifty posts. Maybe even marble posts. They might look nice. Yeah. Um, ooh, light gray metal post. They might also look fancy. White metal post. Yeah. All right, how do I make metal posts? In a rolling machine with iron. Okay. This is a railcraft item, by the way. Rolling machine. Where are you at? There you are. That look, that'll look real nice, I think. We'll let these guys uh, get made. And then we also want some bone meal. I should have a bunch of bones in here. Yeah, I do. That ought to be enough. Cool. All right, almost a stack. I want to kind of fence out an area back there. Just, you know, for uh, coolness effect. So let's see. I think it was something like this to get the white fences, right? Yeah, nice. All right, we'll see if that's enough. If not, we can always make a few more. But, I mean, this is just to look nice. It's nothing, it's not necessary at all. Just 
trying to amp up that making things look nice bit. So uh, what we could do is kind of cool. Yeah, I know. I'm not the best at making things look nice, but hey, it's not a bad try. Uh, do note, though, when you break these metal posts, they uh, revert back to their um, original color if you break them. So if you place them and break them. All right, that looks pretty good. Nothing in particular in terms of size. I just went with whatever looked nice. So uh, there's a couple things we have to look at for factorization. Uh, we want to start generating power, and then we're going to start using power. So there's a few things to get into. So let's first look at uh, how to create power. For this, we're going to need some solar turbines. We're only going to really need about one of these, okay? And that will produce um, energy for us, all right? Then the other thing we're going to need to get along with that are called mirrors. Uh, reflective mirror? Yeah, I guess that's it. That's probably it. Needs a lot of silver. That's what I remember about them. Uh, now the mirrors, when you place them down, are going to direct the sunlight at the solar thing. And it's going to go ahead and uh, create a bunch of energy. And then we're going to put some lead wires down on the ground. So there we go, lead wire. Just three pieces of lead across get you some lead wire. And into that, we will uh, store the energy in a battery. The cool thing about batteries is when you craft them the first time, they have a full charge. But then as you use them, they drain energy, and you're going to have to supply them with more power. Uh, we'll need some sulfuric acid for this to work. We're going to need a bit of coal and gunpowder and a water bottle. And that'll get us the sulfuric acid we need for a battery. All right, so let's get started putting together some of the nifty stuff we're going to want to have. All right, so uh, I know I'm going to need a lot of silver. And I should even put away a couple things in here that I don't really need at this point, like you, you, and you. That'll be fine. Uh, yeah, even you guys can go away. And this, and that, and that's good. All right, silver. Uh, we're definitely going to need some lead. Uh, we'll probably need a little bit more iron. Yeah. We'll get together all the stuff, um, and then we'll probably take a look at what we need to do. So let's start off with, um, let's see, a good way to do this, if we wanted to, is go into our mod list and shift click, shift left click on factorization. Cool. There we go. Now it's going to list all the factorization items. So uh, the first thing I want to make, like I said, is that solar turbine. That's going to be an important one uh, to create energy. We're going to need a fan. That's easy enough, okay? And then we're going to need a motor. Now, the interesting thing about the motor is it, it's, uh, it's a couple things we're going to need to make here. We're going to need some lead and iron, but we're, gonna get in, we're also going to need insulated coil, which is lead around clay, all right? Um, and then we're going to need a magnet, which is a battery of some charge and some lead wires and some iron. Okay, that'll get us a magnet. So let's figure out how to do this. Uh, so I guess the first thing we need then is the battery, huh? Probably. So where is that guy in here? Am I missing him? There he is, way down there hiding out. Lead and some sulfuric acid. So we need some of that coal and gunpowder, right? Just want to have a couple extra pieces. And out of curiosity, how can I get myself some clay? That's the real trick. All right, that's not it. It was the insulated coil clay. I think, oh yeah, look at that, cool, four of them from red, one iron. That works for me. Sweet. There we go, insulated coils, plenty of that. And uh, while we're at it, we might as well make a healthy amount of this stuff, lead wiring, okay? And then uh, we need some bottles, so let's get a little bit of glass. Oh, I need more glass than that. Let's go find some glass. I gotta have some somewhere. Worst case, smelt it up. All right, there we go. Glass, we'll go ahead and combine that with the coal and the gunpowder to get sulfuric acid. Nice. Excellent. Uh, sulfuric acid's ready to go. So let's put together a few things. Like I said, we're gonna need a battery. And that is lead around the sulfuric acid. So let's try this. No, okay, that's not going to work. Lead and iron. There we go, a fully charged battery. See how it starts off with a full charge? Now, uh, like I told you guys, we're also going to need to make ourselves a magnet. And that's just a piece of iron surrounded by the lead and the battery at full charge. But don't worry, it's not going to use up the battery, and it's not lead, but lead wires. 
There we go. Magnet. See, it only uh, used up the lead. It turned it into a magnet by draining some of the energy out of the battery. Pretty slick, right? Yeah, it's really cool. I like that part. All right, now on to the motor. All right, so uh, that's this guy. All right, insulated coils, iron, lead. I think I can manage that. Iron, lead, insulated coils, and a battery. Gets us the motor. Cool. And then we need the fan. And the last piece is the glass. Cool, solar turbine. Now for the mirrors, I'm gonna go ahead and do this um, in here. That's uh, a mirror, reflective mirrors, needs a bunch of silver and some glass panes. I think I've even got a few of them right in this chest. Yeah, I do. So let's go with like, I don't know, 23 of them, sure. I gave us six so far. We're gonna need a bit more silver. And one, two. Yeah, close enough. 18. There we go. 22. Works for me. All right, so we've got 22 reflective mirrors ready to be placed on the ground. These guys are neat. Uh, you'll note that they will reflect the light at the um, thing, but uh, there we go. Got it back. Cool. Um, once it has a uh, nearby solar turbine, it'll kind of angle itself and it looks really neat. So we've got the lead, we've got the battery, we've got the solar turbine. There's only one piece of this puzzle that I need remaining and that is a little bit of water. Uh, water is required for this process to work and I'm going to sleep through the night real quick and then we're off. There we go. To uh, grab ourselves a bucket of water. And let's give this a shot. So the back of the house that I just built is where I'm going to place the solar turbine and the power generation and all that. So let's set that up right like so. Um, right in the center here is where I'm going to place um, our bucket of water. And on top of that goes the solar turbine. Okay. Now you notice that as soon as I placed it, it sucked the water up from underneath, right? So we're actually going to need um, an infinite water source down here. So let me go get um, another bucket or so. And we'll get two buckets worth of water. Any water nearby? Yeah, there's some over there. One thing that's nice about living in a swamp is not worrying about water. There we go. So now, make sure to keep that infinite water source going and this thing will be running full time. Now there's one other thing before I get started here and that is, let's see, mod items factorization. I want one of these guys, a charge meter. We're going to need two lead and an iron. Okay, I can manage that. And of course a sign. Stick, two lead, iron, charge meter. This is basically uh, your EU reader version of uh, an item from factorization. So if you want to be able to read the energy flowing through the factorization machine, that's what you're going to want. So let's get rid of some of the junk in my inventory at the moment. Don't need you and don't need you guys. Good. Uh, just right click on the block and it'll tell you some information like how much charge there is and how many conductors there are and power. Conductors are how many um, items or blocks are connected up to this thing. So if I added a piece of wire here, and then I right clicked on this guy, we see that there are now two conductors and you can also see how much charge there is and how much power is being generated. And of course, the more wiring we add, the more conductors there now, there now are. So um, yeah, nifty stuff, right? Uh, I actually wanna have the battery sitting back in this room, I think, like maybe right here in the corner, might not be a bad spot. And you can actually stack multiple batteries and they'll share uh, power with each other. So keep that in mind, because we might want a couple batteries in here. Okay, so there we go. We're ready for that. Um, maybe I actually want to move this a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, got some of this to put back. That looks good. Nice. That'll do for now. All right, so now we can see that this thing is about 51% full on its storage. Um, it's got a charge of 25 and 11 conductors total. I think it actually shared a little bit of power uh, with the solar turbine and some of the wiring and stuff. So you can see here, uh, you can see it's got a bit of a charge going on. So it drained a little power out of the battery to keep the whole system balanced. 
All right, now to start generating electricity. Good, the sun's still up there. Let's start placing down some mirrors. And look, as soon as we place down the mirror, they're gonna angle themselves directly um, at this uh, guy. Now he needs line of sight. If they don't have line of sight, they're not gonna work, okay? And you'll know they don't work because they'll kind of uh, reorient themselves uh, upward. So this guy didn't have line of sight. This one still does, but maybe if we do something like that, we'll got a good way to block these things. Yeah. Just needs a little bit of a block update. Cool. But once they do have line of sight again, they will re-angle. It just takes a second a little bit. Oh, looks like I'm getting a little bit of server lag. So you can actually see here right now, because of these two sitting here, this one in the corner, not working for us. So we're going to want to get rid of that one and place him right along here. And we're just going to run these guys like so. And they'll all kind of angle their um, light at the solar and start collecting heat and energy from the sun. Cool, right? And once that starts happening, uh, you'll be able to see, there we go, this guy probably won't work actually, so let's move him. These will be blocked by these, so we'll just put him right here. That'll work. Uh, you'll see this thing start spinning, and that's a good indicator that you've got it hooked up properly. And power, it's producing 22 power. Incidentally, the same number of solar uh, mirrors that I put around here. So pretty much for every mirror you put up, uh, increases the amount of power this thing can produce. And you can see it's starting to build up a charge. Now if we came in here, we'll see that this guy's already stored up to 100%, so he quickly filled up. All right, so that's good. Lots of power flowing, lots of good stuff. Nice. So uh, this thing doesn't have too much need for power production anymore, but now let's go build a couple machines to take advantage of this power. And like I said, one of the ones that's going to be most important um, is actually called a crystallizer. Remember, if we wanted to look up um, the item or the machine filter, they both need this logic matrix thing, which is made in a crystallizer. And I'm going to show you guys how to make that. All right, but uh, for now, let's not worry about it too much, and uh, we'll get going with it. So let me talk you guys through the basic layout of um, factorizations or processing. If you want to process your ore with factorization, there are several stages. You start with uh, dirty gravel, which is made in a grinder. That's this guy right here. Uh, so if you want to chew up your iron into dirty iron gravel, you get about 140% boost from that. Okay, But uh, if you want to go further with that, you can throw it in a mixer, and that's where you'll get your clean iron. So you basically create a mixer, that's this machine right here, and you have to feed it water and dirty iron. And what you're going to get from that is an empty bucket back and then you're going to get uh, clean iron chunks and sludge. Cool. Uh, now clean iron chunks can be uh, used to smelt and get iron ingots. Neat. Okay. Uh, but if you want to go even further you can get some reduced iron chunks. Okay. Um, those guys are made in a slag furnace. Or you could finally get yourself crystallized iron, all right, if you take those reduced iron chunks, and then you'll get about 150% from that. So in the end, you wind up tripling your ore output, okay? So it's a several machine, several step process, and some of them take a pretty long time. I think the crystallizer takes somewhere in the realm of 20 minutes, which is a huge amount of time. So we're going to start off by just building for now, I think. I want to make the crystallizer, which is going to uh, be used to make this guy, the logic matrix programmer. All right, so uh, crystallizers are really easy to make, believe it or not. Cauldron, string, and stick. Okay, so I should have most of that. Do I have any string nearby? Should be some in here, absolutely. Okay, so crystallizer, we'll get the cauldron going first. Probably have a lot of iron in there and that would use it all up, so let's just do this. String and stick. So if you think about it, crystallizer is just, you know, hanging some stuff inside this watery stuff. So uh, crystallizer works pretty well. Now, I happen to know that the crystallizer requires a nearby furnace heater. And this is a pretty neat device. I want to show you guys how this works because it's really cool. Uh, we're going to need six insulated coils. So let's get six of you converted into, oh, you know what, I just need two. Okay, that's good. Um, clay surrounded by, what was it, lead? Yeah, I'm running short on that in my inventory at the moment. Let's get some more. Factorization uses a lot of lead. Okay. So clay. And what was it? Lead or iron here? Lead. Cool. Furnace heaters are really neat. Let me show you guys what these do. It's a different take on uh, cooking things. So we've got uh, some lead and we're good to go. So the way the furnace heater works, all right, follow me on this one because it's pretty cool. Is it getting dark out? Yeah, it might be. 
All right, let me sleep through the night. Night slept through. Gotta love the old message. You can only sleep at night. All right, uh, these things are neat. Let me show you what they can do. If you take a vanilla furnace, okay, as you know, vanilla furnaces need coal inside, right? Well, uh, the nifty gadget here called um, the heater, if you place it nearby and supply it with power, it'll start heating up and it'll supply heat to the nearby furnace. How cool is that? Um, and it can actually supply heat to a decent amount of nearby furnaces. I think you can have a couple of them hooked up to this thing. So instead of giving you a block that uh, smelts your metals for you in uh, the way of using power, okay, you've got a block that heats up the furnace for you and it actually just sits there and heats. That's pretty nifty. Uh, and our solar power is churning along nicely. Cool. Um, so that's just a demonstration of that nifty little gadget, but that's not what I'm gonna use it for. Instead, I'm gonna use it for the crystallizer. Dun, dun, dun. The crystallizer is uh, one of those machines that takes a long time. Uh, not even gonna kid you guys, this is the 20 minute one. So unfortunately, we're gonna show you guys how this works and then come back in a moment. Uh, what we need to do, okay, we wanna have the heater there, and what's gonna happen is the crystallizer is going to absorb uh, some heat, and then it's gonna have a cooling cycle that it, I think, self-manages. Uh, we're gonna want some invernium drops. And I think the recipe lookup on invernium is a little bugged right now, but I'm gonna show it to you uh, just like so. We're gonna want, I think at least one, two, three, four of these, okay? It's a diamond uh, with some gold. And I promise you guys this mod used a lot of lead. I wasn't kidding. Okay. And gold. And like I said, gonna get four invernium drops. Nifty. All right, from there, we're also going to actually need, and I can't believe I just had exactly four of these, but that's what I need is four of these pieces of stone. And then finally, um, I need some water. Just one water bottle. So the actual recipe uh, for this thing to cook off is as follows. Let me show you. And I might even break the heater thing real quick. Just to demonstrate this. Um, yeah, I don't have any inventory space. How awesome is that? Uh, I'll get rid of you. Okay, um, what you wanna do is put your invernium drops in here with uh, some glass, um, some water, okay? Now, standard would be to make one of these at a time, like so. Uh, but I'm actually gonna make four at a time, and to do that, you do it like this, okay? You can put the stone really anywhere. It doesn't matter what inventory slots you put things in, but you have to have the four stone in four separate slots, and the invernium in one slot, and the water bottle in one slot, okay? So that's the way we're gonna do things. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the furnace heater down right here, ta-da! And then we should start seeing the flames effect. Good. With that, we know that everything's processing. Now this takes a really long time. Uh, it has to melt down the invernium and the stone, mesh it together, and do some magic to make this nifty little device. So, um, yeah, let's see here. Logic matrix identifier. Now once uh, it's done heating up, it'll cool off, and we'll get some nifty stuff. Look at that. Even a little render of something in there. It's real small, so you can't really see. Uh, but there goes the progress bar. Cool. Uh, you can use the crystallizer to make all kinds of neat stuff. You can make a heat hole, which I'll probably show you guys at some point is really neat. You can also use it to make a slime ball with lime dye and milk. <laughs> That's cool. And you can, of course, use the, uh, the tripling effect for the um, different metals and stuff like that. Awesome. So we'll have to wait a little while for this thing to process, but no worries. I'll be back in just a flash. So I decided to come check on my bees and uh, found a little problem. For some reason, maybe the latest change or something, uh, I don't know how or when this changed, but all of a sudden my alviary wasn't detecting items in inventory. Uh, so I had to change the gate to redstone signal off. So uh, the alviary uh, hasn't been running at all. Hence, I have no, um, you know, bees going on. Oh, is this chest full? Awesome. All right, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, upgrade this thing. We have a lot of extra drones, apparently. Um, Oh yeah, how did my bees get over here? Guess I was just dropping them in stacks at a time, wasn't I? All right, well we have a lot of cultivateds, so I guess we could, you know, take care of that. Wahaha, <laughs> so terrible. But, you know, life goes on, except for them. All right, I am going to uh, let my lapis, you know, process away. It looks like we didn't really have much by way of uh, lapis production, did we? My uh, 
thing ever make it in here? You know what? I think I see a blue thing going down right now. Thought I saw something blue. Hey, there we go. Lapis Lazuli. Nice. How much did we get out of that? Six? Oh, that's not bad. Six per comb? Okay. Not bad at all. I might actually get a decent amount of that stuff. We'll have to wait and see. All right, getting to be night. Uh, it's been, I don't know, a few minutes here. I'm pretty sure this thing isn't close to done yet. But I'm gonna take a quick look. Oh yeah, we still got a ways to go. Hooray, logic matrix complete. Nice, very excited to see this. So now that I've got this logic matrix going on and uh, we'll just leave everything as it is here. It's not gonna hurt nothing to leave it set up. Maybe I'll show you some of the other factorization machines later down the line in the series. But uh, logic matrix, you are good to go because we get to use our logic matrix program. Now, as I recall, we're gonna want some spider eyes and the logic matrix programmer should be, here's one, cool. Spider eye, need two of you, cool. And we get Two of you, one of you, and these guys. And logic matrix identifier. And the nice thing is that it doesn't use up the logic matrix programmer. Cool, right? Uh, so from here, we're probably gonna want some machine filters. And for that, we're gonna need a book, some dark iron, and some silver. Okay, I can manage that. Okay, eight, I need one more silver, and some books. Going to need two and that'll do. Couple redstone and you, you. Hooray, machine filters. These guys make routers ridiculously awesome. So what we're gonna do is come over here and remember last time we had an issue. Uh, where? What we were doing was inserting things into the top of recyclers. And uh, let's take the U matter and the scrap out of here for a second. If all these inventories were shared, Boof, little particle effects indicate that cobblestone is getting thrown into our mass fabricator. We don't want that. So we insert, right click, shift right click, remember, and we go through the tab here and find the machines setting, cool? And the way this works is you tell it which machines to actually put stuff in. Machine rock gen, fabricator, block, gold, all this cool stuff is nearby that you can tell it uh, what it's allowed to go into. So what we're looking for is, um, wow, I don't know. Fabricator, remote, thermo, gold, chest, status display. All right, I gotta figure out which one of these is actually the recycler. So, we'll get the cobblestone out and we'll figure it out like this. So you're inserting into rock gens? Nope. These might be the machine rock gens. Fabricator, no, that's probably the mass fab, right? I don't know, we'll see. Block, remote thermo, nope, probably not. All right, let me track this thing down. All right, guys, believe it or not, we actually have kind of an old version of uh, factorization in the pack, so I gotta get it updated. But um, there is a way to round this. Uh, this isn't just a button, it's actually a text box. Look at this. If I click on here, I can actually type in what I'm looking for. So in this case, it's a recycler. Cool. And by typing in the word recycler on my keyboard, now it's gonna keep the recyclers filled up. And only the recyclers. Note that this guy and this guy ain't doing nothing. Cool. Uh, so I wanna put another machine filter right here. And I'm gonna tell this guy to extract from northeast, that eh, doesn't really matter what side I extract from, uh, but I'm gonna tell it to extract from recyclers. Okay. And that should extract out of the sides of this thing, okay? Um, so extract, and probably gonna want a couple more upgrades in here, so let me get them going. All right, got the um, bandwidth upgrade. Remember that'll pull stacks at a time. And then we've got the ejector upgrade because we want to wind up ejecting this into the um, adjacent block. So I think it's the purple side that we're gonna wanna eject to. So uh, we're going to extract from south sides is fine. And then we're gonna say, um, Visit recyclers, eject to the west, 
and then of course bandwidth upgrade okay now this thing isn't running at the moment probably because it's receiving the redstone signal from the mass fabricator so turn this off and boom everything starts filtering and we've got scrap nice um except it's putting it in there hmm that's not good so what we'll probably have to do is move the mass fab okay so let's do this I'm gonna steal this for a second well no it's okay um where is my wrench cool and we're gonna put the mass fabricator on the top and then we're gonna tell this guy eject to top there we go cool much better right so we just need to uh re allocate some of this stuff right here and boom now we're golden so uh as mass uh fabricators run and the scrap is used up we're gonna be awesome look at this and we're already uh gonna process a bit more of this all right we're just waiting for power at this point so now for the final test i need to get this thing going so we're going to disable um, this uh, thing here. We'll just leave it uh, at capacitor has energy. And we're going to enable this, which will mean the um, nuclear reactor will run. And we're going to see how well we keep things going in here. OK, so it looks like we're quickly churning through the scrap. OK, and how quickly are we producing scrap? Are we keeping up? Not even close. All right, so we're definitely going to need to do something here uh, to make sure that we get more scrap. Because right now, we are not even close to producing enough scrap. We're probably going to need a few more recyclers, but that's no big deal. Because we can set up just more recyclers like here. Just like that, and we'll be good. So I'm going to go make a couple more of them real quick. Let's turn off our nuclear reactor, because this thing is not keeping up. Uh, we need a little bit more by way of scrap. But wait till you see how easy it is to expand the system now, because we're using these awesome nifty tools called routers. All right, guys, I burned through a whole ton of tin and made myself a bunch of overclocker upgrades. I uh, want to show you a trick on how to make those, but I'm running out of time this episode, so maybe next time. Uh, but for now, we're going to lay down six more of these guys. So let's get this hooked up. I want to run some power here, like so. That ought to do good. Cool. And uh, not sure that I have enough overclocker upgrades for everybody to get eight because I just got so tired of making them. They're brutal. Um, wrench. Oh, look, we're already getting a cobble in here, courtesy of that awesome thing called this thing. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, routers already hooking us up with cobble awesome uh so we might need to uh just steal one of each of these and maybe we'll put seven in each we'll see how that goes yeah look how how they're like struggling to keep going with the power <laughs> that's funny so seven for you i didn't really count this out otherwise you know i might have done pretty well but we'll see seven. Oh, did i really actually get enough here yeah, I did. Nice. Made one extra. Not bad. But seven for each. That's a good start. All right. So uh, seven recyclers. Uh, total of nine. Seven overclock upgrades in each. Being filled by cobblestone from the massive cobblegen. Oh, that's cool. And uh, we are going to just see how well this works. Ready? Let's go flip the lever. All we got to do is turn this thing on and... Hopefully, uh, we're producing more scrap than we need. Oh, you know what? That's probably using a lot of power, though. Oh, yeah. Huh, that's funny. Let's see how much EU we're drawing into these machines. Uh, where's my EU reader? Starting new measurement. 128. That's not bad. You know what? I bet my uh, thing up here... Is that why? No, peaceful. How are we doing over here? Yeah, our mass fab is just not behaving. So let's try this. I need to somehow force the energy to go to the recyclers first. I want to see how much if I give them as much power as I can get. Oh, that's definitely not keeping up. Oh, that's maybe why. 128 is the max that we're getting packet-wise down here. Hmm, we're going to have to tweak this a little bit, I think. All right, let's try this. What do you say? 
Uh, I'm going to make no, transformer upgrades. It needs an MV transformer, so nine. Nine. Probably needs glass. Nice. Good guess, Dyer. Nine of these things. I'm going to try removing the um, low voltage transformer and see if that allows more energy to flow through to the machines. And we got to wrap up. We're way past the wrapping up point already, but I want to test this and then we will see what happens. So everybody gets one transformer upgrade. If I need to, I'll give everybody two, but you know, this will allow them to accept medium voltage current, um, which means I can remove the LV transformer, which maybe means we'll get more than 128 EU per tick down here, but we'll find out soon. Almost there, and good to go. All right, removing you, and hooking up you. Uh, cross your fingers for no explosions. Hooray. Here goes nothing. Can we get more than 128 down there now? Hopefully. Oh yeah, they do seem to be processing pretty happily. Nice. So, how much of you is this draining? Um, Give it a few seconds here, and we're 234. That's not bad at all. That's really not bad. And how are you doing, sir? Uh, you have not been doing anything yet. Oh, yeah, my, my golems are uh, refilling. You can hear it up there. That's cool. And everything's happening again. Nice. You should be extracting recycler. Oh, right. You want to turn off this? And we should see what happens. Oh, no, I didn't want to break that. There we go. All right, so are we going to be able to overload this thing on scrap? Hopefully that is a yes. Oh, look at that. I think we are. Look. Uh, we'll see. Hang on. Oh, yeah, look at that. I think we've uh, hit a pretty solid sweet spot here. Look at this. We're producing more scrap than we can use. Could be. We're going to have to let this run for a little bit, but hopefully we're at this point producing more scrap than we can use. That would be really nice. And if we are, it means we've got some serious UU Matter production. So next episode, we're going to have to swing back and pull the UU Matter out of the mass fab. All right, that's the plan. So uh, we got to get that UU Matter out and convert uh, some of it into lappies to refill our uh, nuclear reactor cooling down up there. But at 1,800 EU per tick, we're doing pretty good with this stuff. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Oh, look. I might need a speed boost in this thing. Is this guy not able to keep up? Or is it these guys? What is going on? Oh, wow. Did I, uh, I don't have enough igneous extruders. That is funny. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I do need more than 32. Maybe I need 64. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, totally got to wrap up the episode. Igneous Extruders need more of you. All right, guys. Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Still got some tweaking to do on the numbers on this thing. But overall, the reactor is staying cool, as we can see. None of the overclocked heat vents are burning up. None of this has been tripping. And so far, we've been doing a pretty good job with power generation. All right. Hope you enjoyed checking out some of the factorization machines and checking out how the filters and the machine filters can work. They're pretty awesome. Let's real quick check on our Lappies production up here before we wrap up. And not bad. Made 30. Eh, it's not been that long. Not a huge amount of Lappies, but not bad either. All right, guys. Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.